Welcome everyone to using Drupal to power the YMCA. I hope you've had a great DrupalCon so far. Um, if you haven't, uh, you have a very short period of time to make up for lost time. Um, <laughs> so today we're going to talk about a couple of very closely related projects um, that we're working on uh, that and have been working on uh, that are uh, surrounding Drupal-powered digital signage that we're producing for the YMCA. Um, I, my name is Stuart Rose. I'm a manager of strategic initiatives with FFW. And yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Dmitry Drozdik. I'm tech lead in FFW. And we're with the FFW's uh, dedicated nonprofit team. FFW is a global digital agency with over 400 people in 13 countries. Um, it was formed in 2015 uh, by the merger of Blink Reaction and Pro People. So uh, today we're going to give a little bit of history of the YMCA and digital signage in general and talk a little bit about uh, you know, the, the major goals of these signs that we're producing. Uh, then we're going to go into the different hardware and software components uh, that we're using uh, in these projects and talk a bit about uh, design and content, where we're putting the signs, what we're putting on the signs, uh, and how it all comes together. So there are really uh, two projects that we're focusing on here. Um, and this, these are uh, what we're referring to as our digital signage project and our room entry screen project. Um, and they're, they have a diff slightly different goals, but they have an underlying architecture that uh, is largely similar. Um, so we're kind of talking about them both together. And these are part of two larger initiatives. Um, the first of these, and I'm going to refer to these out of order on this, um, is OpenY, which I think some of you may have heard of. Uh, Dries referred to it in his uh, opening keynote. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, it later. And the other is the branch of the future, which is an initiative of the YMCA of the Greater Twin Cities. And we'll go into a little more detail about that as well. Um, in terms of this project, as Dimitri mentioned, he's the technical lead and I'm manager of strategic initiatives. Um, in this case, largely the account manager, but I work across all open Y projects. So I want to go in, into a little bit of background about the YMCA in general. Uh, the YMCA, I think, you know, probably everyone in the room is familiar with it. Um, otherwise, you may not be here. Um, but it is a large international uh, organization. Um, there are almost 900 associations in the United States. Uh, it's been ranked the fifth largest US charity. Um, works across the world and serves, uh, you know, somewhere around 60 million people worldwide. I think everyone is probably familiar with the YMCA logo. Um, it was actually um, recently identified as the most valuable nonprofit brand in the United States. Um, And it has been around for a while. Um, I mean, maybe not that long for a lot of uh, y'all who might be coming from overseas, but, but for the US, it's been around for quite a while. Uh, the YMCA was founded in London in 1844. You know, and within the first dozen years it existed, it spread really quickly to the US and across Europe. Um, it's, you know, from its very beginning, been you know, a socially active and innovative agency, or organization, excuse me. 
Um, and today, it's guided very much by uh, four of core values, and it's really important um, for us when working with the YMCA to keep you know, the values and the mission of the Y in mind. Um, you know, I've mentioned that it is a larger organization with associations, uh, several hundred associations across the United States. Uh, an association for the YMCA, you know, we're working here with the YMCA of the Greater Twin Cities. Um, each association is independently run. Um, and, you know, you might have grown up, you know, going to a Y and it might have been like a single building. Um, and, you know, many YMCAs have one single branch location. Uh, there are others that have dozens of them. Uh, and every Y is really run very differently. Uh, some of them are run very much out of those, you know, individual branches. Others have, you know, a central structure, um, you know, that, you know, works across all of the branches in that association. And this is a little, this is important um, for us on this project uh, because we're building this project as part of the branch of the future, which is a single branch that's part of the Greater Twin Cities Association, which has you know, a couple of dozen branches. Um, and we work very closely with the central office of the Greater Twin Cities, um, YMCA, which incidentally is going to be moving most of its offices to this branch, um, but I think that's kind of beside the point. Uh, but uh, the idea for us is that the digital signage will be run off of Drupal, off of the same Drupal installation as their website for the entire association. Um, we're currently building digital signage that will be dedicated for a single branch, but there's no reason that this won't be able to um, be extended throughout the entire association. We can consider it, you know, I think we've been thinking of it like kind of like an MVP, but at the same time, it's very much a pilot, right? Um, so I mentioned that the YMCA has been sort of an innovative organization from its very beginning. Um, and you know, there, is, there are a lot of things that we don't realize. Uh, you know, the YMCA either was uh, the origin of or was in some way instrumental in founding. Um, I think most famous among these is probably basketball, uh, which was uh, founded at a YMCA in Massachusetts. Um, but also, you know, they popularize the idea of swimming lessons. Uh, the term bodybuilding was, you know, not the practice of bodybuilding, but the, the term bodybuilding itself uh, was invented at a YMCA. Uh, I, I, you know, maybe jazzercise is not quite as exciting as the rest of those. Um, but uh, nevertheless, in uh, Father's Day, at least in the United States, uh, was something that, came out of the YMCA, but uh, worldwide it had existed before that. Um, last on this list is Open Y, um, which maybe I'm being a little vain in putting it there, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, were at our earlier uh, session on Open Y. Uh, which was, I think, one of the very first sessions of, of DrupalCon uh, this year. Show of hands. Anyone? OK, a few. Um, who I knew that we were there. Uh, but OpenY is you know, at its base. I, mean, I think from your point of view uh, here at DrupalCon, we're going to think of it largely as you know, a Drupal distribution. Um, but it's also more than that. It's an organization. Uh, it's, there's a community of YMCA's um, that has been built up around it, along with uh, several digital partners. Uh, we've 
held um, three at this point, was it three? Uh, three summits uh, surrounding YMCA. The first of these was in uh, Minneapolis, then Chicago, and then most recently in uh, February, uh, we met in Houston and there were over 100 uh, people there. It was really exciting, it's a growing community. Um, but it's also a, a philosophy, excuse me, a philosophy that uh, collaboration among YMCA's and associated organization really you know, drives innovation and impact and makes things possible that wouldn't normally be possible. Um, you know, by producing a Drupal distrib distribution that, you know, is incredibly fully featured, that has a number of um, features that are of great utility to YMCA's, uh, these small Ys that have, you know, a single branch can get a you know, fully featured website that they would otherwise never be able to afford. And that's something that's, you know, not only really exciting, but it also, you know, allows us to help, uh, you know, reach out, serve that mission, and, uh, you know, those funds that they would otherwise have been using to put towards a website, you know, they can put towards programming that can, you know, help kids and members of their community. So I've talked a little bit of the YMCA, about the YMCA of the Greater Twin Cities. Um, it's one of the larger uh, associations in the country, has you know, over two dozen branches, uh, runs you know, well over a dozen camps, has what, about a quarter of a million members. Um, and we're looking very much at their uh, branch of the future in this, it, which is their new downtown branch, um, they have a, a downtown branch currently, um, and they're moving it a couple of blocks to uh, the Gavaday Commons, which is a mall in downtown Minneapolis, which is actually at uh, the busiest corner in Minneapolis. Um, you might recognize the mall from the movie The Mighty Ducks, if you saw that. Uh, there was a scene with someone, I believe, skateboarding uh, and knocking someone into a fountain that was um, on the first floor of this mall. And uh, this mall is being, currently does, looks absolutely nothing like that uh, because it's been totally gutted, uh, you know, putting in a pool and uh, gym and, and everything. So the plan is for this to open at the end of the year. Um, and it's really going to be a showcase for a lot of innovation in fitness um, and innovation in health. Uh, and there are really several projects that are you know, involved in this uh, in addition to the digital signage projects. Uh, we're also working on a smart branch project that will provide information about uh, you know, who's in the branch and who's using what in the, in the branch, uh, which will help, uh, make, uh, help uh, the YMCA make decisions about programming. So goals and objectives for these projects. Uh, you know, we want to use digital signage and rudimentary screens to display time-sensitive, relevant content to members of the YMCA when they're inside the branch. Um, we want that content to be able to be created centrally. Uh, doesn't need to be created on-site necessarily, um, and it can be managed via the same sorts of tools that they use to manage content on their website, so they don't really need to learn a new system. Um, and it also allows them to use content and reuse content from their website on these signs, and vice versa. Um, and we want to be able to group dif displays. So, you know, if we want, you know, all the displays on one floor to display something, we can. Uh, and we should be able to group those displays 
in arbitrary ways, regardless of their physical location. So maybe we expand this to other branches eventually, and we have a group of displays that we call, you know, entryway. So view displays that people can see as they enter into the Y. Uh, we'd be able to, to define that as a group so that we could display the same information at every YMCA that had these displays. So two projects, uh, you know, there's the room entry screens and the digital signs. The room entry screens, to give a little bit more uh, detail onto them, you know, there are studios at every YMCA uh, that where they hold free walk-in group exercise classes. Um, and the room entry screens, the idea is that most of the time they're going to be displaying real-time information about the classes that are being held in these rooms uh, currently and upcoming classes. So that, you know, as people walk by, they can see, you know, hey, in 15 minutes, uh, there's going to be a yoga, yoga class. I'll check that out. Um, you know, maybe run around the track a few times first. Uh, digital signs, you know, are much more general. They aren't uh, focused necessarily on rooms, uh, but they can be used to display any sort of information, uh, marketing operations, mission-related content, uh, and that might be, hey, the pool's closed today, or, you know, it could be a fitness challenge that's used to, uh, you know, encourage members to uh, use underused equipment, things like that. So just to give a little bit of background on digital signage in general, um, I think, you know, most people recognize this, uh, which I think is probably one of the earliest forms of digital signs that we have, uh, these programmable LED marquee signs. Um, I know I was playing with one of them in the 80s. Uh, they were cool at the time. Uh, so while they were you know, cool at the time, uh, they were extraordinarily limited, right? Uh, they could display messages, but you could only see part of the message at any given time. Um, they were not ideal for long messages because obviously only a few uh, letters are going to fit on there at a time. Um, extraordinarily limited in terms of uh, graphical display. Uh, you know, there were some things that might, we might now refer to as like, you know, proto emoticons, I guess. Uh, but there, there wasn't much you could do with it. Um, you know, as time went by, we got better technology, better technology, more tools, um, you know, even some things that, you know, weren't necessarily digital, like uh, VCRs. Uh, that allowed you to have pre-recorded content and video. Um, and then, you know, not necessarily programmable other than like maybe, you know, start and stop times. Uh, but then, you know, eventually with advances in computer technology and screen technology, uh, we came back and were able to move into more programmable media um, and, you know, with moving to flat screens, we got larger, cleaner displays that were capable of showing, you know, significant amounts of readable text. Um, and, you know, in a lot of cases, we find that the content follows the technology. Um, you know, this is obviously not something that we would have tried to display on, you know, an LED marquee sign. Um, there's just far too much information there, and you know there would be no way of uh, really parsing it. Um, and that is, you know, something I find really interesting. Uh, I think what we 
want to do with the digital signage project and the room entry screen project is you know, provide a little bit more context. Um, take a step past you know, what we can display with the technology um, and say, all right, well, let's look at contextual information. Let's look at, you know, I mean, obviously this has automated data sources um, and this might not be the best example because this is, you know, going to show up in an airport and extremely, going to be extremely useful uh, given its location. Um, so we, but, you know, we could provide, uh, you know, environmentally intelligent uh, displays, things that can react to, um, you know, changes in schedule, things that can react to different input, like if we have uh, cameras, we could have microphones, things that could respond directly to, uh, you know, input within that environment that people are in. Uh, and, you know, when part of, you know, the concern, of course, is that with, without these things, without this context, the message gets totally lost. Uh, you, you know, end up with madness uh, that, you know, you build things because you can, not because you should. So I'm going to turn things over to uh, Dima here, and he's going to talk a little bit more about the technology that we're using, and in particular, the, the hardware and software components that we're putting in place. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Uh, I would like to talk about components we use to build digital signage solution for YMCA, and components you will need in case you're interested in building your own solution. So what components are required? If anybody is familiar how digital signage works, you may say that to start use it, you need a few components. Of course, a display screen, where content displays, software to manage content displayed on screens, and a player, or maybe a custom device, to connect display screen with software. Uh, there are no strong requirements for display screen, Enough to have a simple TV screen with USB and HDMI outputs. Such a screen could be used uh, with an external custom device to cast data from the software. Uh, in case the screen has Android or another operating system such, such as smart TV, uh, then in some cases there is no need to use a uh, custom device. But this fully depends on what type of software is used and uh, availability uh, of an application for playing content from the software. Uh, also, there is another type of uh, screens, also known as commercial screens. They are designed to work 24 hours per day, and they are much more powerful and were created especially for digital signage. The next component is software. There are a lot of different tools to manage digital signage content. I won't talk about them right now. You can easily find them on the internet. But I want to pay attention only on some requirements we have on the project. Uh, the ability to create uh, schedules for different days, support different layouts, the ability to use external content by pasting URL links, and the ability to group screens into groups and assign content to group to those groups easily. After some research and in deep investigation, different platform uh, platforms we made our choice on an online uh, tool with a pretty suitable name, Screen Cloud. Screen Cloud. This is a digital signage management software. This, this is a new and fast-growing company. It was created just two years ago and currently provides uh, a great user interface to manage content for display screens. And Screen Cloud works with a variety of devices and supports a variety of different media types like video, audio, web, documents, social feeds, etc. Uh, also, Screen Cloud allows simply create schedule for different days and assign those schedule to different groups of screens. 
Next component is a player. Usually player is an application which could be used, uh, which could be built on Android, iOS, or other operation system. Uh, even your smartphone could be used uh, as a player. So since uh, the TV screens we use on the project are not smart TVs, uh, they, are not, they don't support the installation of setup applications, and we need to use a custom device. Uh, for instance, uh, such devices could be like Google Chromecast, Google Chrome Beat, Amazon Fire TV Stick, Amazon Fire TV, and many others. Most of the companies providing uh, software for managing di digital signage content also provide their own devices, which work only with their software. And usually such devices cost much more than those I mentioned. That's why on the current stage, we decided to use Google Chromecast since it's cheap, just $35. It's easy to manage and easy to set up. Uh, Google Chromecast also is well supported by Screen Cloud, but as any, any device, it also has some undesirable aspects. Like uh, Chromecast is pretty dumb device. It's uh, not particularly power powerful, has minimal storage, and there is no possibility to install uh, applications and this means we need to use a smartphone as a middleman to, to start playing. And uh, I can say that this is not our final decision, and the eventual device could be changed in the future to a much more powerful device. Uh, and the final component uh, we have is open wide distribution. The open wide distribution uh, it's a dis distribution built on Drupal 8 and uh, uses Drupal 8 contributed modules and useful modules from YMCA's and digital partners, uh, such as Personify Integration, GroupX Pro, Online Scheduling, Mind Body Personal Training Management, and many others. Uh, since the website of YMCA Twin Cities has been built using OpenY, and our team already built integration with third-party services. Uh, we reused their architecture to use data from those services uh, to display them on digital signage and through mentor screens. Uh, OpenY has been built in a way that each feature uh, and each component is decoupled and could be enabled or disabled at any time. And uh, this solution will be built in the same way that it will be easy to enable or disable on any open wide distribution. Okay, now Stuart will tell us about design and its requirements. Okay, um, so in terms of design and content, we had some really interesting things going on here. Um, I mean, the first is that you know, we're dealing with, uh, you know, physical signs in the real world, which is not something that, you know, a lot of uh, Drupal teams have a lot of experience with, right? Um, so that was one of the really unusual challenges of this project. I got to play with, uh, you know, blueprints and such, and, you know, that was fun. Uh, we were looking at where to put these signs over you know, the five floors of the new building, uh, which didn't exist yet um, in any you know, completed state. So we were, you know, this is you know, actually one of the working documents that we were looking at. Um, we were working closely with the architectural team. Uh, we had some interesting constraints in terms of ADA re regulations. Um, we needed to integrate uh, particularly the room entry screens with the signs that, you know, go outside rooms normally that needed to uh, comply with the ADA regulations in terms of placement and braille usage. Um, so they had to be within like a certain uh, distance from the door um, and all of that. And that was some really interesting challenges there. Um, we ended up 
uh, you know, narrowing down the places where we wanted signs. Uh, you know, I think at first we went, you know, a little overboard, uh, which, you know, my image of Times Square was uh, kind of from personal experience. Uh, and we cut uh, the number of signs that we eventually used probably down by half or so. Um, in terms of, you know, design, uh, we, you know, I think benefited from the fact that uh, the YMCA has incredibly strong brand standards. Um, you know, they have color schemes, fonts, uh, and guidelines that provided us with a, a really strong framework for design, and we'd already done quite a bit of work within these brand standards uh, for uh, the YMCA of Greater Twin Cities and some otherwise. So we uh, tried to, you know, very much integrate uh, these signs with the same sort of look and feel as, you know, other uh, elements that displayed uh, the YMCA brands on site. Um, we also ended up narrowing down the number of screen layouts that were, we decided to use. Um, you know, initially we thought about putting in a wide variety of components, uh, but we wanted to make sure that we had a viable, uh, you know, a viable MVP, uh, if that's not redundant, which it probably is. Um, and to do that, we wanted to make sure that we actually had uh, a sufficient number and variety of components that would fit into the different layouts that we wanted to implement. And so we narrowed it down to uh, three vertical layouts and uh, three horizontal layouts, uh, you know, one you know, full screen, one uh, that's essentially a full screen with kind of a, a bar across the bottom, and the third, which is a, you know, divided screen. So I'm just going to run through quickly a couple of our initial um, design concepts to give you an idea of the sorts of things, uh, particularly during the ideation phase, that we considered um, as, you know, potential things to put onto uh, these digital signs, uh, including schedules, uh, facility status. Um, you can see, you know, there's some uh, marketing materials as well, challenges, uh, announcements about, you know, upcoming classes. And uh, this is an early prototype of uh, one of our room entry screens. So, pass it back to Dima. Okay, thanks, George. Uh, let's move on to the next part, which, which describes how we connected all components to each other. So, an overall diagram looks so. A content editor opens the website to manage digital signage content and content for room entry screens. Uh, everything is available right from the website. No need to use external websites and to remember hundreds of credentials. Uh, and as we already said, we use OpenY uh, distribution to integrate with third-party services uh, and to build user interface, which will be easy to use. About these integrations, we will talk in a few minutes, but on the other hand, the website already has an integration with Screen Cloud, uh, which in turn has a connection with Google Chromecast, plug it in, with, in display screens. The current YMCA Twin Cities website will be primarily used uh, for creating and managing content that will be displayed on various digital signs in the branch. Uh, this will be the primary place uh, where Twin Cities team manages all of the content uh, that appear on digital signs and true entry screens. The website also is already integrated with third party services like GroupX Pro which stores schedule about free activities uh, and personify 
which stores information about paid activities with trainers. And this is the main benefit of creating an interface of managing screen content for, right from the website. Uh, Gurbex Pro uh, is a private-based communication portal uh, for group fitness programs, uh, which used by YMC Greater Twin Cities to manage schedule of different activities. And this service provides two ways of integration. One way is to use JavaScript code, which renders schedule uh, in a way that uh, GroupX Pro provides. Uh, you can see a result uh, of rendering a schedule on the screen. But as we always love to do something more than default things, this way doesn't work for us. And another way is to use their API, which allows to pull data from GroupX into the site. And our team created a few layers of integration uh, that gives a lot of flexibility in use data from GroupX. And now the website is, has a very easy to use multi-step form uh, to quickly find needed information. Another third party system which also has information about schedule uh, is Personify. I won't talk about much about about it, since this platform can take another hour of discussion. Uh, the main idea of integration with Personify is to pull data about paid activities, store it in Personify, add them to the schedule, and uh, create the un unified schedule uh, from different uh, third-party services, and display them on room entry screens. Uh, integration between these sources work in the next way. Firstly, our modules pull data from third-party services into Drupal, where for each element uh, of data creates its own entity. And uh, since a schedule al always should be up to date, the website stores the information about future classes as well. After getting all of the information about schedules, uh, from third-party services, in Drupal starts a processing engine that a processing engine of the received data, and in our results we have a new entity called session, uh, which allowed to collect information from all third-party services and get some unified data that could be used uh, on the Drupal and. Uh, in views, in references, in blogs, and uh, in room entry screens as well. The new entity is absolutely independent and has its own uh, managing interface, allows adding new items to the schedule and overriding existing items. And overriding we need in case of any emergency, uh, for example, if class has been canceled or trainer has been changed. And then, when we get information about uh, current and upcoming classes, we use the, those data for website and for room entry screens. Uh, on Drupal side, we've created some custom entities and content types, which help us create own schedule of content we want to show on screens and manage it easily. First, and the key element of this architecture is screen content. Uh, this is a content type which uh, has two important components. It's modules and layout. Uh, it will give the Twin Cities uh, a view of what's being displayed on a screen at any given time. Next, next part is schedule. Once once screen content is created, it can be added to a schedule. As a schedule item with a time, how long it should be displayed on the screen. And schedule entity gives the user the ability to visually rearrange uh, items within a schedule. And the last entity is screen. Once the, once the schedule is created and it already has some items to show, it could be assigned to a screen, uh, where a screen is uh, 
something like a representation of the physical screen uh, in the branch location. And it will be used by Drupal to identify and manage screens by YMC administrators. Uh, as Stuart already mentioned, we have defined some layouts, which gives, use, gives us the possibility to display content from room entry screens and dis digital signage. Since TV screens we use anode big for room entry screens, we need to show information uh, in a way that it will be easily readable. So all room entry screens will have only information about uh, current class and upcoming class. This is the first top line of layouts. Uh, for digital signage, we have enough space to show more information. That's why we decided to use uh, full width and two columns layouts. For content modules, we mainly use Drupal blocks, uh, also with different settings. And main modules for room entry screens are scheduled activities in branch and schedule for a single room. For digital signage, we are leveraging existing open Y blocks and build three new blocks, like a promo block, free HTML, and block with announcements. Room entry screen schedule block allows easily filtering uh, schedule of activities by location, by room, but by date, and other parameters. And in result, we have information about current and upcoming classes on room entry screens. Also, OpenY provides blocks uh, to display marketing content, which allowed by Twin Cities team. And currently, we work on the possibility to leverage them uh, for uh, digital signage, and we are working on changes the architecture uh, to be able to reuse them. And uh, a new type of block, uh, promotional block, also allows content editors to enter text and images which will be transformed into promotional screens. And the block with announcements can be used uh, on any type of type of screens, like room entry screens or digital signage, uh, in case of any emergency or if they want to show useful information. For example, there, there could be information about uh, um, that somebody forgot something in a room and where that could be found. So what we use? To build this solution, we have not used any unknown modules or libraries. Of course, a base for this solution is Drupal 8 and content types, blocks, and layout plugins. Uh, we use only a few, a few external modules. The key modules are Penalizer and Panels, uh, in, and Panels EPA, Inline Panel Editor, which provides an awesome interface of managing content from front end with the possibility to change layouts and add different blocks to them. Here is an example how adding blocks looks in the panelizer. By default, regions uh, of layout have different backgrounds and to identify borders of region where we can place blocks with content. On this example, two blocks with content already added to regions to show us a content in the same way how it will be displayed on digital signage screen. And after saving uh, this, uh, this content, we have a URL which, uh, with a content that could be used in screen cloud. And the last brick of this uh, architecture is screen cloud. I want to show you how to set up a connection between the website and screen cloud. So first, you need a smartphone or tablet based on, on Android or maybe iOS. Then switch on TV and plug in uh, Google Chromecast. Then install Screen Cloud Remote app from Google Play Store or App Store. Next step is uh, registering player using mobile application and 
you will see this message on the screen while registering. Sorry for big for the bad picture, it was created at home. After that, you will see a code on the screen, uh, which have to be used to register screen in screen cloud. Here is an example of the message. And the final step is to configure content you want to show. In Screen Cloud, we created a playlist with only one item, and that item is linked to screen content uh, on the Drupal website. And in the end, enjoy. This is just an example how it looks on my home screen. Uh, you can see that layout does not fit uh, this screen. It's just because my home screen is much more bigger than we expected. And eventually, using this combination uh, of components, we get these benefits, like inexpensive solution, uh, simple to screen, Chromecast and, and screen cloud. It's flexible, widely available. Uh, all elements are independent at, and could be changed any time. For example, uh, we can change Chromecast uh, any time, and also we can change uh, software like Screen Cloud in the future, because we already have uh, interface for creating content on Drupal site. Also seamless editing experience from the website. Uh, it's easy to use, and it's also available anytime and anywhere. And need only one time setup for adding contents from, from the open way. And of course, it's open source code, uh, when the solution will be ready, it will be part of the open way. And as any solution, it has some benefits and disadvantages, and this one also has. So casting device is not really powerful, and uh, it will not work in case if you, if you will want to, you, to play YouTube videos all day long, but this is actually not our requirement. Uh, also, in case of any power outage, you need to run it manually again. And of course, third-party software, it's a black box, and sometimes it can work with issues. And now I would like to show you a short demo how initial version of this solution works. This is the express version of real schedule for room entry screens. You can see this one is the crack size screen. Um, we sped up time a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, you know, obviously this can be used uh, for things other than, you know, the YMCA, um, you know, we've all seen digital signage used elsewhere, oftentimes for like, you know, rotating, you know, slideshow type advertising or billboards. Um, and one of the really nice things, as I mentioned before, is that in addition to, you know, just presenting, updating information, this has the potential to react to the environment and interact with people, whether that's like via you know, camera or touch screen or, or whatnot. Um, can also, you know, see this in offices where we're, you know, putting in like, you know, reporting on performance or other sort of like passive information. Um, we've all seen this in, you know, public transportation with uh, arrival times and status of public transportation. You can think of like, I'm sure thousands of use cases. Uh, we often see this in like uh, education or um, you know healthcare type situations where it provides uh, context relevant information based on location or time. You know 
whether there's a, you know, in an emergency room, it could have different information depending on what the current wait time is. It could have, in a hospital, different information uh, during visitor hours as opposed to other hours. Um, see things in in sports uh, with up to the minute scores and stats, and that can react to things that happen, you know, in game in almost real time with you know, replay videos or messaging, uh, you know when someone scores or things like that. Uh, and of course, you know, you can have uh, you know, marketing information in stores. Uh, one of the other things you can think about here is in addition to just marketing information, you can again have contextual dynamic information that maybe highlights different products or different areas of the, of the store, you know, based on, you know, up to the minute, uh, data on inventory and sales, right? Things like that. Um, and you know, one of the earlier, I think, things that uh, digital signage got used for is probably uh, you know, menus and things that, like that that uh, display a lot of content that changes uh, potentially fairly frequently. So that is about it. Um, thank you very much. You can all please, of course, uh, take our survey. And uh, for those of you who will be here tomorrow, uh, please join us for contribution sprints. Uh, we will be hosting a sprint on Open Y in the general sprint area in uh, rooms 309 and 310 tomorrow morning. Um, you can look for Craig or Alex uh, if you guys wouldn't mind uh, raising your hands or standing up or something, uh, find them and they will get you started. So I think we have maybe like five, six minutes uh, for questions, if anyone has any. So my boss always says there's three hard questions or problems in software, you know, caching validation and off by one errors. So, that being said, I um, want to kind of ask you about the deal with uh, rural er areas where YMCA's might have unreliable internet. Um, how much of this will still work? Uh, is any of this being cached in, in, in offline availability? Yeah, actually, this project has many items that could be discussed, and one of them is caching and validation. And uh, I can say that we are working on preparing offline mode that will contain information about uh, schedule for for each screen for the whole day. And even if screen will not have any connection to to the internet, it will have information what to show. Uh, That's phenomenal. I add this to that, I think. You know, one of the reasons that we're considering uh, maybe moving away from the Google Chromecast is because it doesn't have uh, memory to, uh, you know, store things that have been passed to it. So, uh, what's that? Um, and we're, we're considering a few things. We, we might move to Chromebit. Yeah, Chromebit. Um, Chromebed? Chromebit, which is essentially uh, a Chrome device on a stick. 10.4. Any other questions? Hey, so I have a question. How would you uh, approach a Y? Like, I'm a member of the Y here. I live in Baltimore. Um, I mean, I can show them the demo. I can show them the site. Uh, I mean, do you have any recommendations on how to approach them? Like, hey, I, I'm a Drupal developer. They're like, what does that even mean? Yes, openymca.org. Um, you can also. Uh, you know, reach out to Craig here. Uh, there's, who is one of the people, or myself, really. Uh, we're helping to organize the real, the open white movement. Um, so, you know, there is a group of who of YMCA's that are interested. Have we talked to Baltimore at all? Uh, not that I know of. Um, yeah. So. Anything else?
But yeah, um, on a side note, if you're interested in OpenY, you, uh, I mentioned openymca.org. You can also check out sandbox.openymca.org, which is, you know, sandbox site, uh, allow you to play around with it a bit. Is Green Cloud the only um, option you guys are integrated with, or are there others? Um, uh, I think it's the only one we're using, but there are uh, quite a few options. Do you have anything to add? Yeah. Actually, as I said, uh, each element of this architecture is independent, and Screen Cloud also could be changed to any solution you want. It just needs to support pasting URL links from the website. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I I don't think that OpenY itself is uh, dependent on Screen Cloud because what we're doing with Screen Cloud is we're, we're taking those URLs that are generated from the, uh, was it the screen content type? Yep. The screen content type, and we're just plugging those into Screen Cloud directly. So anything that can take that kind of uh, you know, input, you can just plug in uh, and use totally independently. Okay. And um, so you don't have any uh, management um, between your Drupal and Screen Cloud. They're actually run separately to input the URLs? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're, we're generating the URLs because that's what Screen Cloud needs. Gotcha. But. Very cool. As an uh, YMCA member and Drupal agency, I just wanted to say thank you for working on this awesome open tool. No question. Thanks.